uh, Johnny and Barry back with you, and while we're working our way out in the middle of nowhere, you know, I was just kind of talking a little bit with John, and uh, kind of want to bring up a point that I think is rather important, and that is, I, I want to bring up again about an exit strategy in terms of what a vital part it is to anybody's plan B and um, I'm basically going to say it outright uh, everybody will do what they think is right but about three years ago maybe four years ago I did a post called the perils of a three-legged stool that went kind of semi-viral and I want to bring that back up again that if history is a good teacher and it certainly is if you don't have an exit strategy in place no matter how prepared you think you may be you are in for one hell of a damn bad surprise and all you arms people, I'm fully with you on that. Old Barry's a believer in protecting yourself and being able to bear arms, and I do. But you need to think of this in a cyclical manner and not a linear manner. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about this, and maybe John will put in a one or two on how he feels. But for somebody that's learning every day, but still been in these countries for almost 40 years now, or probably it is 40 years, I want to tell you something. Right now, America's hovering about 320 million people. Now, doing a little bit of research, you guys can check this out yourself it's easy to find out there's over 320 million weapons in America not counting weapons that America exports okay gotta keep those uh, terrorists funded you know what I'm saying but all bullshit aside you do some quick math and again I'm bringing up you're asking the wrong damn question so many of you guys are emailing me, which I appreciate, asking me questions about what do I think is the right amount of weaponry and the right amount of ammunition to support that weaponry, and I haven't got a fucking clue because I don't live where you live. So your first red flag is anybody that's offering you advice that don't know shit about what they're offering it on, put on your Nikes and run second point I want to bring out crunch some numbers and learn how to ask the damn right questions and the right question is not what arms do I need everybody needs arms that's a damn no-brainer what you need to be asking yourself is what's the percentage of the population that can suffice for six months off-grid and you're gonna find out if I gave it one percent on being damn generous so crunch your numbers even at one and a half percent. Your one weapon is going up against 66 equal weapons more or less of those that are not prepared. You like them odds? Go for it Daniel Boone. Most of you are used to your jobs, your office. Most of you are used to going to a range and thinking that's something special and that's all good I'm not saying any of this is bad I'm just saying start thinking from a cyclical nature not a linear nature or you're gonna get hurt and you're gonna get hurt bad because out of those 99% roughly 318 million people more or less equally armed are gonna be going up against 4 million <clears throat> You like them odds? You stick and shoot it out. I think you're nuts without having a backup plan. And should you never need it, that's fine. 
should you need it you're gonna be damn well glad it's in place but don't start thinking about putting it in oh. place when you need it so I would much rather go up against a population that over 60% of it is somewhat involved in some form of agriculture rather than less than 1% if we're talking about America. The percentage is uh, a little bit, quite a bit actually, higher in Europe. But if you think you're smart enough and you're crafty enough to put your one weapon up against 66 others. Now start amplifying that. Okay, you got four in your family, take four times 66. How are you going to be awake 24 hours a day? Ain't going to happen. You need a minimum of three families with you on an eight hour shift. And I'm saying minimum. You got nobody growing shit out there to eat. Everybody thinks tuna's caught in cans. You best start thinking about that. And it ain't a threat, and I sure as hell ain't saying this is the right place for you. Because it ain't for a lot of people, and it is right for others. But there's a multitude of other countries that are gonna survive this chaos a lot better than others will. And if you don't think it makes sense, good luck to you. I'm not here to say I'm right or wrong. If you do think it makes sense, again, good luck to you. You gotta figure out how you're gonna do it. But the point is you're in for a world of hurt. If you think stocking weapons and food, and you being it, being the go-to, is gonna get you by, you better rethink that. You have anything you want to add on that, John? You know what, Barry? I, everything you've said, I'm in total agreement. And it's, it, you know, guys, it's really important for you to listen uh, to what Barry's just said. And, you know, I'm just going to add to it. This is not, uh, we're not trying to promote this as the only country. Um, but it, it does have its advantages of being here. What with the agriculture? There's just so much food here. The other thing is there's so much freedom here. And one of the one of the things that I really love about this country is that the people here, when there's a problem, they don't they don't ignore it. They stand together and they band band together. And it's really important that that is still something that uh, exists in this country. They are still they still have a lot of pride, and uh, they strike still. The doctors go on strike for three days. The teachers go on strike. They band together when they know that the the government's gone to a limit and that's something sadly missing in America it's one of the advantages of living in a country like this Europe too Europe look, too, look yeah. what's happened it's completely lost to the refugees yeah well we're gonna let you think on that a little bit as we work our way down uh, once again in the middle of nowhere but I'm going to tell you something you better sit and you better think about that long and hard and don't think about I'm trying to get you to this country because honestly I'm reaching a point I don't give a damn anymore with stubborn people. You can fend it on your own. And I'm tired of having people sit there argue that have never even been out of that country. Well, I've been in over a hundred of them and I'm not coming across like I know everything because after 40 years I'm learning every day. But I know one thing, I'll be around surviving and I won't be hungry a lot longer than most of you listening to this tape right now. We'll catch you a little further on down the road. I just... Something that came to my mind, I'm going to eventually be doing posts about this, but um, I've been saving and doing a fair amount of research on this, and what I'm coming up with is damn well sad if you think you're going to make it by the amount of information, uh, I mean by the amount of weaponry and the amount of ammunition and the only reason it came to mind was it's one of the most popular questions I get asked all the time. I can tell you what I need for this country in my region. I will not offer advice. There are far too many so-called experts in this world and 
I'm not an armchair Kevin Harvick or Dale Earnhardt Jr. I don't know what it's like to be in the stock car at 220 miles an hour. So, take it for what it's worth. And I just really re-emphasize, be very, very cautious of taking advice on how to play hockey from a coach that don't even know how to skate. All right, we'll catch up with you further on down the road. Out for now.